I'm Lauren. I work at Coles. I am 25 years old. And I have an almost two-year-old named Ava, who's my little princess. But yeah, other than that, husband, who's great. I'm Tim Rose, 19 years old, and I go to Southern Cross University for the Preparing for Success program. So I can get into the civil engineering course up there. So I can later get into the explosive engineering course that I actually want to do. My name is Declan, I'm 20 years old, and I'm an electronics technician in the Royal Australian Navy. I'm also a big nerd, so I love mechanical, electronics and gaming. My name's Jar Sullivan Pont, I'm 25 years old. I work at UFK UPA just doing odd jobs um, every now and again. And if I'm not working, I'm playing video games and just visiting my girlfriend uh, most weekends. <laughs> My name is Tilly Jones. I'm 18, currently starting year 12, um, and I really love music and playing it and composing it. So I originally went into out of home care because. Um, family breakdown, basically. My dad had gotten very unwell um, and my home life had become really unstable as a result of that. I disappeared for a while because that was the best thing for me to do for me, um, but that wasn't safe. So, yeah, I ended up in out-of-home care and then eventually I was returned home. So in my two years, of care experience, I had five or six placements. Um, I was picked up from school one day by people from Fax, and we were taken here to Lismore and sent to a resi care house out at Jigai. Just they showed up one day, asked some questions, showed up about a week later and took us away. I was never actually given an explanation as to why I was taken. To, you know, they're meant to be a letter, but I've received one. I was in foster care from seven up until 18. Um, I went through three foster carers, one which only lasted about two months, one which was just a respite carer for one day, and then my current carers up until I was 18. My foster care experience was actually really good. It was because of my foster carers that I calmed down and turned into the person who I am now. None of my care experiences were good at all. I think I was around four or five from what I can remember. Me and my younger sister were neglected in most households and a lot of the punishments were quite questionable because I just wanted to hurry up and turn 18 so I could live independently. I was born November 2001 with cerebral palsy, ADHD, Asperger's and fetal alcohol. So obviously my parents went quite equipped to look after me then. So when I was about nine months, I think I came to Jenny and Marge who were my foster parents and I consider them my parents. Um, so I've been in this one placement my whole life and they've been really supportive of me, especially with my music and my schooling. Um, the main purpose of the group, from my point of view, was to create this bridge between young people who are in the system or out of the system and give their experiences to the people who are running the system themselves. Oh, they were really impressive young people. As I said, they'd thought about um, the questions beforehand. They'd obviously discussed it together in a safe space and they'd covered all the territory that they needed to raise with government. Um, 
you know, we also set some rules for the discussion um, and they were part of that, that there was no uh, wrong information to give. It was their experiences. They were the experts in their own lives and we really valued um, their input. Rod had been given this task of, you know, getting young people's opinions for transition programs office and they were transitioning young people from like fax care to NGO care. Um, so he contacted me straight away knowing that I had been in out of home care and asked me if I'd like to be part of it. Okay, the way it actually got started was that Lauren and Lauren's friend and a, and a, uh, a Bundjalung woman who worked for Family Community Services and Steve actually from Social Futures and myself organised a workshop, gave them the idea and young people then directed, oh, let's meet this often, let's have these kind of agreements, let's do these, this will be our aims, let's do this. And so that's what we did. The main contributions that I made to the group was the initial setup. Um, so I did a lot of going and talking to young people and going to um, the regional implementation group before we even had a group um, and giving feedback based on a young person's opinion kind of in the early stages before there was anything. Um, so I did a lot of work around that early setup and the early establishment of Care to Change. And then after that, I tried to sit back. Care to Change meetings were nothing really formal. There was literally a bunch of young people either who are still in care or even finished care like myself. Beanbags everywhere. Everyone loved the beanbags. You had some food. There's just a couple of people got together. You made friends, we sat in circles, played name games. Talk, sometimes even have a laugh and eventually just order pizza and it is more of like a chill thing. Talked a, bit, a little bit about ourselves, just got to know everyone. And there's always pizza. One of the first ideas they had was, well, we need to have direct representation on this, this formal meeting of all the agencies. They were meeting to make policy and procedure decisions around how the rollout of the transition should happen in the northern region, okay? The young people felt it was really important for them to have a direct voice in those meetings. And so that's what we, that was probably the very first, how are we going to do this? We're going to have direct voice. And so that's what they did. Um, so one of my favourite experiences that did occur for me being in Care to Change was when I went to a rig meeting. Um, I was the youngest person in the room and they asked us how we should show the foster care system and we did it visually. So they had me stand up on a chair and they had all the adults in the room just surround me in a circle and look up to me. That was a very eye-opening experience and I remember that forever. It gave people this visual that they need to be looking up to the people in the system and actually look at them, put them in the middle. And that's exactly what we were. We were a microphone, a beacon, a group that wanted to be heard and people wanted to listen to us. I thought getting the young people's voice on the rig was important for their ideas about young people's experience. It, I think, if anything, it was more important about what they did to the actual... I get very emotional about this. What they did for the actual culture of the rig itself. It changed from being... You imagine all these people, very lovely, caring people, like they're incredibly hard people, but they get... They get into positions of, you know, upper management and they have less, less contact with young people. This is my theorising around it. And so bringing young people into that forum again gets everybody out of their heads. Like, gets them out of their heads about numbers and financial budgets and, you know, policy responsibilities and all this stuff to, oh, my God, you're actually here for these young people right in front of it. And my what I experienced was it took people out of their heads into their hearts. Well, I first heard about Care to Change in 2015 through a lady who I was working with at another youth program. And she mentioned the group Care to Change and that they were doing a round table with Children's Commissioner Megan Mitchell and invited me along. What we learnt from that was that, you know, case planning was not done very well. It wasn't done with children and young people. And so they felt quite disempowered. Um, they lacked voice and control within the system. Uh, and there were all sorts of other things that they identified that made a good carer and that we should be promoting uh, within the care system. As part of Care Change, I did the round table with Megan Mitchell. 
I attended several carer trainings with, through CASPA, CREATE, and several other organisations. I also did caseworker trainings through the same people. And then she took our feedback on what could be done better and put it in um, a series of national reports. The national framework um, as a result of the consultations uh, and, and other processes has established national uh, standards for out-of-home care which apply across Australia so that no child is disadvantaged because of where they live. Ever since care to change was a thing, I've noticed a lot of other foster care agencies are actually going out of their way to ask the young people in their care, like what their, you know, their experience is like, what they think and what they think, you know, could go better for them. And I'd say there's a lot more questions being asked, a, a lot more voices are being heard, just being a more awareness. There's a lot more awareness. That's the biggest change I see. Um, yeah, it's quite fun, most of the trainings, because, you know, I was in power for once, not the people on the other side of the desk. Um, I got to shape how they're going to help these young people's lives. It's empowering, I guess you could say. I learnt how to open myself up to people. I learnt how to open myself up to large amounts of crowds. And I also learnt that no matter how difficult my life was, there was always people who may have had it better or worse than me. I learnt how to public speak and I learnt how to relay my information forward. So from being in Care to Change, I, being amongst all these other young people that wanted to create change themselves about this system, kind of gave me more of a motivation to advocate for change myself. Because before I was kind of sitting back and just being a bit complacent about it all, thinking, oh, someone else will do that, it doesn't really affect me. Um, then I realised, no, it does start with us and we have to be the ones to kind of move forward that change. So I think that if we, you know, as a system gave young people more power and stopped trying to take it away and treat children like they're small, um, we change the world. And there are thousands and thousands of young people in out-of-home care, you know, today. And if you changed thousands of kids' lives, if you gave thousands of children the ability to speak and you stop silencing thousands of children. Who knows what that brings tomorrow, you know? Yeah. So we try and be respectful in our parenting and we want Ava to have the ability to kind of make choices for herself and her own body and her own life and her own world. I think that that's really important not to take power away from a child. <laughs>